Chapter 1 The Foundation of Piety and the Root of Perfect Service of God is for a man to clarify and come to realize as truth what is his obligation in his world and to what he needs to direct his gaze and his aspiration in all that he toils all the days of his life. Behold what our sages of blessed memory have taught us is that man was created solely to delight in God and to derive pleasure in the radiance of the Shekinah, Divine Presence. For this is the true delight and the greatest pleasure that can possibly exist. The place of this pleasure is, in truth, in Olam Haba, the world to come. For it was created expressly for this purpose. But the path to arrive at the desired haven Psalm 107.30 of ours is this world. This is what our sages of blessed memory said. This world is like a corridor before the world to come. Avot 4.16 The means that lead a person to this goal are the commandments which the blessed God commanded to us. The place of the performance of these commandments is only in this world. Therefore, man was first placed in this world so that through these means prepared for him here, he will be able to reach the place prepared for him, namely, the world to come, there to be sated with the good which he acquired through these means. This is what our sages of blessed memory said. Today to do them, and tomorrow to receive their reward. Eruvin 22.1 When you look further into the matter, you will see that true perfection lies only in clinging to God. This is what King David said, But as for me, closeness to God is my good. Psalm 73, verse 28. And one thing I asked from God, that I seek, that I may dwell in God's house all the days of my life, to gaze on the pleasant, pleasantness of God. Psalm 27, 4. For only this is the good, while anything besides this that people consider good is really emptiness and mistaken worthly, worthlessness. For a person to attain this good, it is proper that he first exert himself strenuously to acquire it, namely, to exert himself to cling to the blessed God through the power of deeds whose consequence is this end. These deeds are the commandments. The Holy One, blessed be he, has put man in a place where the factors which distance him from the blessed God are numerous. These are the physical lusts which, if he is drawn after them, behold, he draws away and goes ever further from the true good. Thus we see that man is truly placed in the midst of a raging battlefield. For all matters of this world, whether for the good or for the bad, are trials for a man. Poverty from one side versus wealth from the other. This is as Shlomo said, Lest I be satiated and deny you, and say, 
Who is God? Or lest I be poor and steal. Proverbs 30, verse 9. Tranquility on one hand versus suffering on the other, until the battle is waged against him from the front and from the rear. If he will be a man of valor, emerging from the battle victorious on all fronts, he will be the Adam HaShalem, whole perfect man, who will merit to cling to his creator and will emerge from this corridor to enter into the palace to enlighten in the light of eternal life. According to the extent that he conquered his inclination and lust, and distance from the factors which distance him from the good, and exerted himself to cling to God, to that extent will he attain it and rejoice in it. If you look deeper into the matter, you will see that this world was created for man's use. But, behold, man stands on a great balance. For if he is drawn after the world and distances from his Creator, behold, he corrupts himself and corrupts the world with him. But if he rules over himself and clings to his Creator and uses the world only as an aid to serve his Creator, then he elevates himself and elevates the world with him. For all creations are greatly elevated when they serve the Adam HaShalem, O perfect man, who is sanctified with the holiness of the blessed God. This is like what our sages of blessed memory said regarding the light which God stored away for the righteous. Chagiga 12a when God saw the light which he stored away for the righteous, he rejoiced, as written, The light of the righteous rejoices. Proverbs 13, verse 9. And regarding the stones of the place, which Yaakov took in place under his head, the Midrash says, Chulin 91b, Rabbi Yitzchak says, this teaches us that they gather together in one place, each one saying, Let the righteous man lay his head upon me. Our sages roused us to this fundamental principle in Midrash Kohelet, saying, See the work of God. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 13. When the Holy One, blessed be he, created Adam, he took him and led him to pass before all the trees of the Garden of Eden and said to him, See how beautiful and excellent are my works. All that I have created, I have created for your sake. Be careful that you do not become corrupt and destroy my world. The general principle of this matter Man was not created for his state in this world, but rather for his state in the world to come. Only that his state in this world is a means towards his state in the world to come, which is his, which is his ultimate purpose. Hence you will find many statements of our sages of blessed memory all along similar lines, comparing this world to a place and time of preparation, while the next world is compared to a place of rest and eating what has already been prepared. For instance, they said, This world is like a corridor. In Avis 4.16 As I wrote earlier, Today for their performance and tomorrow, for receiving their reward. Avoda Zara 3a. He who toiled on Friday will eat on the Sabbath. Kohelet Rabbah 115.
This world is like the shore, and the next world like the sea, and many other statements along the same lines. Indeed, you can see that no rational person can possibly believe that the purpose of man's creation is for his existence in this world. For what is man's life in this world? Who is truly happy and content in this world? The days of our life are seventy years, and if by strength eighty years, yet their span is but toil and trouble. Psalm 90, verse 10. How many sorts of distress and sickness, pain and burdens, and after all that, death. Not one in a thousand can be found to whom this world has granted plenty of pleasures in true contentment. And even such a person, if he reaches the age of a hundred years, already is as one who already passed and disappeared from the world. Furthermore, if the purpose of man's creation were for the sake of this world, it would not have been necessary to imbue him with such a lofty and exalted soul, greater even than the angels themselves, especially so when the soul finds no satisfaction whatsoever from all the pleasures of this world. This is what our sages teach us, in Midrash Kohelet, but the soul will not be fulfilled. Kohelet 6, 7, or Ecclesiastes 6, 7. What is this analogous to? To the case of a common peasant who married the king's daughter. Even if he brought all, her all that the village possessed, it would be as nothing to her for she is the king's daughter. So too with the soul. If you would bring to her all the pleasures of this world, they would be like nothing to her, for she is from higher worlds. Kohelet Rabbah, chapter 6, verse 7. Likewise, our sages of blessed memory taught us. Again, your will were you formed, and against your will were you born. Avot 4.22 For the soul does not love this world at all. On the contrary, it despises it. If so, certainly the Creator, blessed be His name, would never have created something for a purpose which is against its nature and despised by it. Rather, man's creation was for his state in the world to come. Therefore, this soul was placed in him, for it benefits the soul to serve God, and through it a man will be rewarded in proper time and place. Thus, this world will not be something despised to his soul, but rather beloved and cherished by it. This is evident. Behold, after knowing all this, we will immediately realize the grave obligation of the commandments upon us and the preciousness of the divine service which lies in our hands. For these are the means which lead us to the true perfection. Without them, this state will not be attained in the least. It is known that a purpose is not attained without the combined contribution of all the means found and employed to achieve it, and employed to achieve it. According to the capacity of the means, and their use will be the resulting achievement of purpose, and any slight deviation found in the employed means will be very noticeable in the end result derived from their combined contributions. This is self-evident. It is obvious, therefore, that we must be meticulous to the utmost degree in the manner of observance of the commandments and the service of God, just as the merchants of gold and precious gems 
are meticulous to the utmost precision in weighing them due to their precious value. For the fruits of the commandments is the true perfection and the eternal preciousness of which there is nothing more precious. To summarize what we have learned, the primary purpose of man's existence in this world is solely to fulfill the commandments, serve God, and stand up to trials. The pleasures of this world should only be used for aiding and assisting him, so that he will have tranquility and peace of mind in order to free his heart for this service incumbent upon him. Thus it is proper that all of a man's inclination be solely to the blessed Creator, and that all of his actions, great or small, have no other purpose than to draw closer to God, blessed be he, and to break down all the barriers separating him from his Master, which are all the matters of physicality and the things dependent on them until he is drawn towards the blessed God like iron is drawn to a magnet. And anything that he deems to be a means serving to drawing close to God, he will chase after it, grab hold of it, and not let it go. And anything which he deems to be detrimental to this, he should flee from it as one flees from fire similar to what is written, My soul clings after you, your right hand upholds me. Psalm 63 verse 9 For his coming to this world is only for this purpose, namely, to attain this closeness by rescuing his soul from whatever hindrance and detriment to it. Behold, after we have known this general principle and clarified its veracity, we must investigate on its details, according to its stages, from beginning to end, as Rabbi Pinchas ben Yer arranged in his teaching, which we brought in the introduction. These steps are watchfulness, zeal, cleanliness, separation, purity, piety, humility, fear of sin, holiness. Now we will clarify them one by one with God's help.